Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on the show this week, we have another ripper from Kotic. There's a new gravel bike from Nukeproof. Some progressive springs from Cane Creek. And some titanium drinking straws. Okay, so straight into news. Uh, first up in news is that new Kotic, um, another new Kotic, in fact. One. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this one right on screen, as you can see now, the, this is the Flare Max, um, slightly revised design on the bike. It's got two degrees steeper seat angle on there. Um, it's got new geometry, more travel, revised kinematics, and some new colours as well, which do have some obscure names. Yes. Say. If you notice, there's a red dwarf yep. in amongst those, uh, supernova orange and dark grey. <laughs> um, I like the red dwarf colour, personally. Yeah. I was a big fan of the show. And that kind of copper, copper colour on the orange yeah. one looks yeah, really nice. nice as well. Uh, so it's got a 75.3 degree seat angle, so that, uh, that's the effective angle, but that's nice and steep. Uh, good for climbing, 65.6 degree head angle, nice and healthy. Uh, the reach is from 444 up to 515 across the four sizes, so yeah, big bikes. decent sizes, yeah. Big, I mean, that's like Nuprif big, like big, big. I think potentially even bigger, because if you take into account their reach, is massive. I think, I can't remember what it is in the large, but it's like... I always looked at it and I, I balked somewhere. I was like, that's a big yeah. old bike. Yeah, well, I, so, um, you super know, cool. I'll go to the, the XL 515, that's the same as, same, the yeah. same as what I ride, so um, really into that. So it's now got up to 125 mil travel out back using their drop link system on there, uh, which apparently is supposed to ride very nicely. Mm. Now, speaking of those that are in search for a forgiving ride, how does a 180 mil travel 29er sound? A bit more than forgiving. A bit more than forgiving. Comfortable. See you later, bump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the high tower, Santa Cruz high tower, has really established itself over the last six months it's been out or so. Yeah. As a big hitting enduro bike. God, it was. Certainly is now, yeah. But Cascade Components, who have kind of formed with making aftermarket suspension linkages for Santa Cruz's, have brought out their own kind of aftermarket jig up of the Santa Cruz. So, so this is the whole bottom link, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And it's beautifully machined. It takes the stock setup of 160 mil all the way through to 180. Now, it is big bike. It can also basically, depending what you pair that with in regards to the stroke of your shock. So you do have, depending if you go for, um, you know, you get 180, 170 or 166, depending whether you go, um, I think it's 65, 60 or 57.5 in the stroke length. Yeah. So lots of choices. There. Loads of options there. It's pretty cool. But do you think there's much of a demand for a 180mm travel 29er? I'm sure lots of people are going to want it, but flipping heck, like, that's a big old bike. It is a big old if bike. If you like downhill bikes, used to be that much travel. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's a lot. But that said, you know, you can pedal these bikes up anything now. So yes. the, the argument is going to be, well, why not? Yeah, well, travel doesn't weigh anything. Yeah. You know? Um, I, I think we had this discussion the other day that, you know, we would both have a similar sort of bike to that as you sort of you, the big bully for, you know, alpine riding and those days where you just don't, don't want to care about anything. <laughs> yeah. But it's not going to suit everyone for a, a daily. No. It, wouldn't, it wouldn't suit me for a daily, but that said, I would really like to ride one. I would really love to give one an absolute thrashing, especially with that VPP. I imagine it feels, well, it must just feel like a V10. You know, yeah, I think it uh, probably would now bottomless. these days, yeah, that new low slung sort of platform. Yeah, trick bit of kit that, really nice. But what, what does that mean about warranty? Because it's not like changing a shock or a fork on it, this is changing a part of the frame. Yeah. It's, uh, it's got to affect things somewhere there. Yeah, it's a bit of a different animal. Word on the street is that Santa Cruz have said something along the lines of, as long as it's not the linkage that is to blame for you damaging or breaking your frame, and it is still manufacturer's error, then you know, they'll still be pretty good for that. But if you've got a Santa Cruz and you're thinking, hmm, I'm tempted by this, maybe it's worth just talking to your local distributor or your regional distributor beforehand because they might be able to give you a lot more detail. You know, that's just rumour. Rumour I've heard, but it'd be great to actually get it straight from the horse's mouth before. Does it nonetheless looks like a trick bit of kit for the fetlers out there? It does look really good, especially in that polished aluminium. Mm. Mm, looks good. Now, uh, next up in news is some more progressive springs. Uh, this time from Cane Creek, and you might have noticed these because they're all white. Yeah. Uh, the regular springs are black. The Cane Creek progressive springs, progressive core springs, are white for easy identification. I think these look really cool. And obviously what they can do is even cooler. Yeah. So with your springs, springs give a very linear suspension curve. So what does the pound mean? So say a 400 pound spring. Well, that means for every inch that the spring compresses, yeah. it stores 400 pounds of energy. So if you imagine a spring that's got the, the wraps are quite far apart, we were talking about this last week as well, yep. then it is quite, um, quite a low spring rate. 
but when they get quite close together, they're getting quite stiff. So that's yeah. usually representative that it's got a higher spring rate. So you can see just by looking at one of these cane creek curves that they are in fact progressive. Yeah, because, open at the top, isn't it? And yeah, because they're not uniform all the way through. So what they do is for the initial half of the stroke, it's still say a 400 pound spring, but then it will ramp up in the, in the second half to deliver and go into a different spring rate, a dual spring rate to hopefully provide some bottom out resistance. So I guess kind of doing what a, naturally what an air spring does is exactly that. getting harder to compress the further you go through the travel. Exactly, so they modeled the, the leverage ratio upon what one of their rear shocks would feel like with one volume spacer in it. Okay. So it's to kind of replicate that feel, but for that first 400 pounds of energy stored, for that first stroke, that first half of the stroke, it's going to be exactly near enough the same as a linear coil. So super supple, that kind of padding through the terrain, beautiful. Do you know, I'm, I'm not sure a coil shock is the right one for me. I've said this before, but with the climb switches now that you get on the cane creek shocks, I'd be kind of, kind of tempted to have a wet on one of those. I reckon yeah. top tip for 2020, Ooh, everyone's yeah. going to be back to coil. We've and, seen it coming. And they're light as well. Two, these kind of, the Volk springs, they're 200 grams lighter, two or 300 grams, depending on which one you go for. Kind of like a lightweight Fox spring then, yeah. Yeah, super cool. And um, you know, I think Cane Creek do should get a good share of the kind of credit for this coil, coil spring phenomenon that's coming back for round two, maybe uh, even round three. And they make some flipping good shocks as well. They do indeed. Mm. So we also have a release, which actually I saw you pointed out, of the new Newt Proof Digger. It looks pretty cool. Talk a, you've, you've ridden one, eh? What yeah, like so him? Robert Newproof, he lent me, very kindly, lent me his bike to um, wear out for a couple of winters <laughs> back. Just um, sandblasting. Well, it's a 650B wheel bike, it'll take 700s on there. I think I, had, I was running it with 42s on there, mm -hmm. uh, some WTBs I think were on there at the time. Um, yeah, really great, nice low slung, really stable, wicked bike for just winter thrashing. Um, I pretty much went mountain biking on mine, a little bit uncomfortable as you'd imagine, but yeah it would do it, no problem, and made things really exciting. And would you want a dropper on a bike like this? I would have done, yeah. It didn't have one on there and it was robbed, so I just rode it as it was basically. But yeah, but yeah you can, it had routing for it. So uh, these new ones have the new Shimano GRX group set. So the gravel group set, and the cool thing that I spotted is they've got a dropper basically running off the actual brake shifter there. So no, so no dropper key. post lever. So yeah. whether you're on the hoods or you're on the drops, you can, Get to it. yeah. It's a well thought out bike. I know Blake loves it as well. He had one uh, earlier in the year, used it for a lot of stuff. Yes, he did indeed. So did Elliot Heap. He released the Mech Shred at last yeah. year. Yeah. Him just so, so controlled. And, um, you know, this revisits an issue which we talked about a bit, but we are going to do the old HQ rides retro. Yep. I wonder, you know, there are people that still say, oh, nothing rides like retro, so much fun. I bet you can have a similar amount of fun smashing around on one of these bad boys. You could have more fun on this than on a retro bike. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Got you got more, <laughs> seriously, you got more control on it. The brakes work better. I was pretty surprised what you could get away with on it. And I think the fact that you could ride a fairly basic trail and get the same feeling as riding a black yeah. on a really capable bike yeah. means you can have instant fun anywhere and you're getting, you're getting really fit doing it in yeah. an easy way. Uh, it's a winner, really, for a winter bike, I'd say. All right, next up is a new Giro range. I actually saw a preview of this. I'll call it Gyro just because we're mountain bikers here. Um, a new range hooked up with Bicycle Nightmares. So this is a completely different sort of stance as you'd expect from um, a lot of the big companies doing more racing focused stuff. This is a complete opposite. Almost a, an entirely black range. It's super cool, I've got to say. And they've got this on the Tyrant helmet, the block goggles, uh, and these gloves, which have got Pittard's leather, which, oh my God, they look amazing. Um, they've got a, the, the palm on them is super thin. The Pittard's back, uh, notoriously comfortable, really good in all weather as well. I think they're, what are the gloves called? They're called the Outsider glove. Just a really cool range, I think. I think those guys are on it at the moment. Yeah, I think it could double up nicely as a driving glove, I imagine, as well. Oh, 100%. That Sunday yeah. stroll. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> but they do look really, really good. And Bicycle Nightmares is actually, I mean, it's worth checking out their website because I'm sure you'd be a big fan of just the photography. Oh, yeah, it's no, I have. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, really nice. In fact, nice. Um, it was Dane from Gyro that was telling me about it when oh, I last okay. saw him, and he, he showed me a few preview shots, and I was like, man, that's like a pretty bold move for a big mm. company like Gyro to do that, but it looks awesome. Wicked range, yeah, and you see, like, you know, it's very 50 to 1 and all those sort of core riders. Uh, well worth checking out. Okay, next up is something a little bit unusual. I actually spotted this over on Bike Rumor. Um, Silka are making titanium drinking straws. Yeah. Now, I did look at this online, and you can get plenty of 
drinking straws made out of titanium and other metals, mm. but they're not silker ones, and they don't come in the rainbow finish, and uh, what do they call it? Gold, aqua, royal, purple, and rainbow. Um, completely excessive, and almost no one has any need for them. You've got, you've got to love that, though. Yeah, I mean, it's quite a niche group they're going for. Yeah. Bicycle riding, gin drinking, chapstick enthusiasts. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, that's it. But no, they look pretty I, cool. I have. Just if, I, on, if, I, if I reach into my pocket here, I think you find I have oh, my, oh, wow. my, my labial stick. Why are you like James Bond? My, my labial stick. Oh, heavens. <laughs> For chap clips. <laughs> Make of that what you want. That's what it says on there. But, uh, yeah, and I love a GNT, so yeah, but I'm down with that. Yeah. Um, 30 bucks for two though, pretty pricey. But imagine then you're taking them around in like an executive travel case, oh. accompanied probably by your Giro driving gloves. Yeah. Just uh, may I, like whoosh, bam. Pull out my cash clip as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, something I've always really, really, really been a big fan of working workshops is a parts cleaner, especially oh, yeah. the eco parts cleaner. Well, yeah, certainly, because they, they tend to run quite hot temperatures and they're not that environmentally sound, but I know there are some really good yes. environmentally friendly ones out there. Such as, I mean, Mockoff now are stepping into it and they seem to be branching off into all directions. They're suddenly like stepping up big time, aren't they? Yeah. With a jet wash and all sorts of things. It seemed like only a few years ago, they were just starting to do like kind of maybe the aerosols and yep. the frame protection. And now they seem to do everything. It's a household name really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And um, so they've got their new Eco Parts washer out. It comes in two models. I mean, this is all professional grade stuff. Yeah, obviously. yeah. Say. Um, the Clean Move, which is a 40 litre tank. Yeah. So like 40 litres of fluid cycling around, which is a shade lower than 1,000 yeah. pounds. Or the Big Clean, which is 100 litre, so basically the benefit of that would be you have to change it less frequently, I presume? Of course. Now I guess, well, that's really for a bigger bigger workshop, yeah, multiple sure. mechanics working on there. And it, that is for one and a, well, £1,500. Yeah. So one hell of an investment, but, you know, they are worth their weight in gold when you're cleaning out mucky drive oh, trains 100%. day in, day out. Yeah, and, and uh, the, the whole eco thing is important to say that they've got their own range of eco cleaning tablets and formula to use with these, uh, and the temperatures they work at as well. So they say uh, people tend to do temperatures up to 43 degrees, which their one will do, but also goes down to 32 degrees, uh, which really does help saving on electricity and heat and stuff. But yeah, we might look into it, it might not. They're fairly big, but if you're a proper workshop geek, then I'm sure that you'll know about pulse washers anyway and how good they're actually are for cleaning stuff. Yeah. Pretty cool. Obviously it's a trade based rather than consumer, but unless you're a real serious consumer. All right, now it's time for Bike Cave. You know the score, this is where you keep your bikes. It could be the back of a shed, it could be a car, it could be under the stairs in a closet, whatever it is. Take some pictures and send them to us. There's a link right there. Um, first up is from Tomas in Slovenia. Um, now I can notice it's quite cool that we're on, on the TV there. It's quite a recent shot because we're wearing uh, the new jumpers, but, yes. but it's kind of nice. There's a room full of road bikes. Also some fine art creeping in there. Yeah, well, one, one's a bit of fine art, another one's of a, a Honda Goldwing or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Very strange. Sofa shaped motorbike. What does he say? Many, um, many road bikes. Ro roadies are a little impatient. Mountain bikes are outside waiting for a turn. <laughs> well, <that's, laughs> okay, pretty well, cool. That is true because uh, the GCM boys always push in front of us in the coffee machine upstairs. <laughs> So yeah, we know, we know what you're... And you've redeemed yourself with those tan wall tyres. Oh yeah. Hanging up. So D3s, oh, yeah. are they? Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Yeah, with Vittorio tyres on, very nice. Uh, right, so you've got quite a kit in there actually, got some good stuff. Got WD-40 mixing up there with um, muck off stuff as well. Uh, is Lines that a cat? <laughs> I think can't it's tell. a, so I think a cat. Is that a cat or a fur hat? <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't, yeah, yeah. can't really tell. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I'm going to say cat. Cat or hat, the crazy game. Yeah. <laughs> got decent wheel jig, so that suggests that you are really into your mechanic in, which is good. Um, selection of jerseys, GMBM winter jersey at the front there. Good work. Nice. Nice to see. Okay, next up's from um, Jack in Gosport. I'm only 17, I uh, don't have the money or resources for a complete bike cave, but I've got everything I need. Well, you go, that's all that's, that's, all all that's that important. Yeah. yeah. And you'll naturally just buy more tools as you start learning more and wanting to do more on mm. your bike. I mean, we're still buying tools now. We yeah. still yeah. bought some tools the other day. Yeah, so it never ends. You can never have too many tools, so, <laughs> so don't worry about that. Um, you've got a cool looking setup. You've got everything that can. You've got work stand up on the wall there. You've got your bikes hanging up. Uh, so you've got silver line tools. They're all good. Uh, top shelf, the silicon spray. That stuff makes carpet slippy as ice. So um, I can't work out if that's great or not, but it smells really nice. It does. Yeah. I often just, you know, splash just the car seats. <laughs> <laughs> You get in, so it smells really good. <laughs> <laughs> you say half to shave. 
<laughs> Big fan of the cubes, eh? Wow, yeah, three cubes. Okay, a couple of hardtails and then uh, and then Das Fritz. Oh, wow. There we go. There's the money bike right there. So uh, you've obviously got some money if you've got one of those. You're yeah, doing all right. Pretty cool. Say. Big hit to that. Some uplifts on there as well. Yeah, MT7 brakes on there. Looking good. Good selection. Well, that's a bit distorted angle shot. That's a bit funny. Nice sticker on the toolbox. Definitely added value to your Stanley Fat Max there. <laughs> good work. Nice. Good little setup yeah. you've got there. Nicely well lit. Thanks for sending those in, guys. Keep them coming. Now it is time for Top Mods. Now, I love Top Mods because it's our chance to see the work that you do on your bikes. So if you're at home and you think you've got one ready to go, send it in, use the uploader in the link below, and um, yeah, we can take a peek at them and hopefully feature it on the show. First up is one from Angel in the Philippines. Awesome. Which is super cool. It's always great when we get Do people. What? It seems like there's a over. bit of a bike scene going on over there we don't know about. This is a lot of viewers watching our stuff from the Philippines. I think we need to come over. Let us know if you're from the Philippines, you watch underneath and tell us, tell us why we should come over. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, back to you. <laughs> but this bike looks really cool. Looks like he's kind of been running it from its original guys with a suspension fork all the way to this pretty decked out guys with super lightweight wheels, a rigid fork. I mean, it must just be a climbing machine. It now. looks fast, doesn't it? Mm. Dirt Low roadies type front. thing, yeah. Yeah, no, it looks really, really good. And what tire is that? Is that an icon on there? I can't, I can't quite see. Uh, There's a pace. Yeah, yeah super Front fast rolling tires, those. Yeah. And next we have oh, one look from at that. Tristian, and this is his custom DMR sled with Cane Creek, which we were talking about earlier on. Front and back. Now that, that is a good looking bike. That I'll is. It it's definitely my shade of black, yeah. yeah. All the way through. So it says custom in Invisi in Invisi in Invisi frame graphics. God, get your words out. Um, yeah, looks awesome, mate. Mm. Really it's cool. Really, really good. And those Cane Creek forks, they oh. do look super nice. I've never ridden any. I'd love mate, to try they, some. They, they feel amazing. They really do. It's a great fork. Um, you don't see that many of them about. No. You know, and I, don't, I, I don't know why that is. I, I guess but it's very easy for people to get a bike with Fox or Rock Shocks or whatever on. Yeah. Um, but they're amazing. You can adjust the travel internally. You can adjust like, the air volume space internally with no extra parts. Yeah. It's kind of all there. They offer a coil yeah. option as well. Yeah. And I think, in some ways, I quite like that you don't see them very often. Yeah. Because they always piques your curiosity when you do. I trust them as a brand as well, Cane Creek. Mm. Well, yeah, the Diatech back in the day and yeah. now just everything. I think they're one of those brands that they all, they're real innovators, mm. you know? I think even, we talk talking about their shocks early on, but like, you know, the Flock, Fox, the Flox. <laughs> Jesus, what? The Fox X2. Yep. You know, actually, the architecture of it is pretty similar to what they were doing years ago with the double barrel. Of course, yeah. The twin tube yeah. suspension designs, but basically you can isolate the, the circuits, the yeah. damping circuits. And I just think mountain biking owes a hell of a lot to King Creek. Yeah. Just awesome yeah. company, really oh, like them. Secret weapons, those forks are. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're twisting, your bike looks awesome as well. It's really cool. Uh, next starts from Andrew in Scotland. He's got a 2012 Enduro, so 26. 26 is not dead, see? Yes. Loving it. Still running. Uh, replace the Avid brakes with Shimano Z. Yeah, nice and powerful. Mm -hmm. um, 160mm Lyric with some spacers. Spank Uzi bars. Mm -hmm. um, are, they, are they the ones with the foam core? Like the uh, vibra, the core, vibra core, I believe. Kind of interesting concept, that. Yeah. They're doing I, their rims I, now. I, I, can, I can feel how that would work. Yeah. Um, PT grips on there, so they're the lock ons. Short stem vault pedals, high roller two tyres. Man, you've spent a lot of cash on this. Good mm. work. Yeah. Yeah, good old bikes, those. Yeah, Solid cool. performers, quite classic. There you go, there's that back brake. A lot of power in that thing. Yeah, big time. Nice. Nice work. It's cool to see people spending money on 26 still. See, there's nothing wrong with them, it's just another wheel size, isn't it? Yeah. All right, now it's time for Rewind, where um, pretty much I get to ramble on about old stuff. Um, as he keeps telling me. <laughs> Not at all, I love it. It's like a, every day's a school day for me, and I like Rewind. But I just let, I let you do your thing and I just take notes and it all goes in. At some point, we are going to get Henry on a retro bike. And I was, so we've kind of touched on this a few times and it's not to, for the sake of riding a retro bike, it's just to appreciate like, just how insanely good what we have is now. Yeah. So I reckon it'll be a cool video, get you on a super old bike, get you on a mid bike and then the new bike and somehow we can combine them. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to this just as an experiment and somebody that, yeah, I do, I do have, well I have it too easy. 
that guy's got it too good. No, you haven't. Like, it's, it's, how, it's how it is now, and yeah. it's, it's amazing. Like, yeah. I, I literally can't emphasize how good bikes are now. I feel it's like that Monty Python sketch, though. Oh, I had, you know, call for breakfast, 25 hours a, in a, 25 hours a day. Mine, I woke up four hours before I went to bed. I feel it's a bit like so that. True. So I'm interested to see what the retro thing's all about. It was, like, there's, it's only good memories. There's nothing good about riding these things. Okay? <laughs> We're still going to find out. But let's, let's get on with Luxury. that. Luxury. So, so <laughs> this one, this is from uh, Ricky near Southampton. And this is a 1994 Rally Dynatech. Right, so Rally, uh, obviously they you know, made the Burner BMX. They made loads of they made famous shopping bikes, budgie, kids' bikes, all sorts of stuff. And they were never that cool as a mountain bike brand until they had that special products division. Yeah. And then they started making Dynatech bikes. And some of these were metal matrix composite bonded into like Reynolds tubing. Some had carbon, some had titanium. In this case, it's a titanium one. And would the m tracks was that a model of Rally? Uh, yes, would that's right. Yeah, it's kind of later yeah. on down there. Um, but they were beautiful bikes. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, And there was Rally USA. It's a very different company to yeah. Rally UK. But... These were awesome back in the day. And the fork on this, so this is one of the x light forks. So we were talking about Muckoff earlier in news, and Muckoff used to be just a single product from x light x light yeah. was the original company, basically uh, fronted by Rex Trimnell. Um, and these forks were an absolute masterpiece. Like, you look at them by today's standards, of course, it's nothing like what you'd want to ride, but they're absolutely incredible. So forward thinking. And was that for in, putting your phone in the middle between those two pieces? It, that's there? exactly what it's for, yeah. That's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> that's forward thinking. Fair. They're rare as though. You don't yeah. really see many of these. So super cool to see it. Um, uh, you're based down Queen Elizabeth Country Park sort of area. Uh, bought the bike from the owner of Fleet Cycles in 95. Kept it for 24 years. Mm. Uh, that's really cool. Completed the cycling for Cancer Research Challenge in September 2019. Mate. Way to go, dude. That's awesome. Um, I and now he's converted it to one by and new brakes and still riding it. I think there's something, when I, when I look at um, retro bikes, probably through some kind of veil of sort of ignorance, like I really just appreciate them in a way that perhaps you don't, because you had the experience of them, so you understand the reasoning. Yeah. And I just think that looks really nice or perhaps not so much. But I've always loved, such as with this bike, the, um, the inventive ways and the elegant ways people have put cantilever brakes for the routing. Yeah. And you know, like, especially on stays and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. And like that, yeah. just through the fork, it just yeah. looks just tidy so clean. elegant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. a real 100%. craft to it. Yeah. Yeah, sadly, these days, there's a lot of issues with routing on bikes that a lot of people still haven't got quite right, I think. Yeah. Doesn't help the fact that, you know, you've got uh, some of us run our front on the right, some the other way around, that really messes things up. Yeah. A lot of US way around, looks cleaner. I once tried to reteach myself to get, I went mad and I thought, I'm going to I want the cleaner routing. Oh, and I just thought, because when you go, because then you can go left and, well, yeah, anyway. And it went horribly wrong. Yeah, I'm not surprised. It was horrible. Wait, it was actually, skip, did you? It was on a road <laughs> bike and it was me and a guy called Elliot Jackson, who yeah. World Cup racer. Yeah, yeah. And he had his, funnily enough, he had his brakes on the way around. And we had a, we were descending this hill and we had about 45 billion cars behind us. Like, who are these absolute punters? Yeah. And I was like, he's actually really good on a bike. I've got no excuses, but like, ah! Backbreak only, just holding that prone. It was so embarrassing. Wow. It was really, really, really bad. Sorry, I digress. <laughs> uh, next one, not from that random story. <laughs> I, love, I love these little nuggets, because we never know where the show's going to go, you see? Yeah. Uh, so this is a Proflex. So this, this is a bike that would have made you horrified back in the day. Um, by all accounts, they were very good, but the medium of the actual suspension units, um, MCU Elastomer on there, uh, which it looks like the front one's probably sagged a bit with age there. No coming back from that. But... They were kind of really cool. They actually really worked. They were one of the first ones. I think it was a ProFlex 550 was probably the first one. It didn't even have a suspension fork on it. It had the flex stem. It had one of them as your front suspension. And it had a shock on the, well, I'm say shock, a lump of rubber. That was a rear shock. But it's still kind of cool to see it. Are you a betting man, Doddy? A betting man? Are you, do you, are you partial to putting five quid on something? Do you know what? I'm not. But, you know, when you hear people like, whether Leicester City winning the World Champs yeah. or, <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? Well, sorry, not World Champs, Premier League. I think going down to a bookies and saying five quid that telescopic forks won't be around in 10 years. I'd, they give you amazing gods, but it just seems, I think, I might go, I might put, anyone on that? What odds are people going to give me? Five quid, 10 years, no more telescopic forks. You know, I, it's hard to say. It's hard. it's hard to say, but I think there's going to be a lot more linkage forks for sure. Yeah. Uh, absolutely no doubt in my mind about that. I just feel there's just, there's I just, I know. There's a change coming. I just feel there's a change coming. Mm. Change in the air. Well, so, uh, what else can I waste five quid on? Um, <laughs> well, not waste, but you could buy some GT Retro <laughs> yeah. stickers. Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> no, it's all good. But nice segue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to take it and run. 
I like Ron Burgundy. <laughs> Ron Burgundy? Wow, I've got a moustache for that. <laughs> so uh, GT uh, Tech Shop was the name for basically all their tech division stuff back in the day, but now it's re GT Retro Tech Shop. Um, basically, check them out on Instagram. Rebuilds all iconic bikes and add in stickers. So if you're a retro GT fan, you might want some stickers, basically. So uh, check them out, all good. And that is it for another week's GMBN Tech Show. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a show. Now, if you want to stay with the channel, Doddy did a really cool comparison of the older XTR versus the brand spanking new one. Yeah, the old Trek. Yeah, really cool retro riding. So click down here for that one. And click down here if you want to see Henry's video all about threads. Um, I kid you not, it is only about threads, but there's some stuff in that you would never have known. Uh, I'd, I'd learned some stuff from it. I mean, it was really good. I talked a lot. Threads, 12 minutes. Yeah. Threads, but... Dude, I think it was really good. Thanks, um, man. Check it out. <laughs>